welcome to episode nine of The Well. I am coming to you from hotel quarantine. Um, today is day five, day five, day four, I think it is. Um, but feeling really good, so far so good. Everyone has been in a fantastic little routine. I've been very diligent about my routine and um, just making sure there isn't too much screen time and that we're all emotionally feeling okay. Um, I've been eating really well. I've been drinking my love well. Um, I have been, yeah, just feeling generally really optimistic and happy and, and just so grateful that I had the opportunity to come back to Australia. I know there are so many people wanting to come back to Australia who are currently unable to. So I feel grateful that I can be back uh, to give birth and um, just to be back in my home country. So it's been really good so far. Um, today for episode nine, um, I thought I would talk about perspective, uh, self-reflection, and dabble a little bit on um, the communication and how communication changes after self-reflection and ways in which we can really refrain from being reactionary in our interactions with people. Um, I happened to do this morning a reading um with a woman called Anna Turian and it was funny because my card the cards that kept coming up for me were like the feeling cards and you know holding my arm out for difficult people um communication like the throat chakra and so I just thought it was the perfect topic to discuss um I would say that I've evolved immensely in terms of my communication. I am a water sign. I'm very, um, I'm a feelings person. I'm very sensitive. I definitely have had periods in my life where I would feel hurt by someone or something, an action, and I would get very reactionary and defensive. And, um, I would communicate without taking a look at my part in the situation. And I find that I've grown to such a place now that when hard things happen, I really try and look at them from a different perspective. How have I contributed to this situation? What what are the ways in which I have added to the discourse and the uncomfortable feelings that are coming up because of this conflict? Um, I definitely have had periods of time in my life, even just in the last four or five years, where um, I would let things really, really get to me and be so mad at the other person involved without really taking a look at my side of the street and saying, all right, what is, about, what is it about me that's bringing up all these feelings? Um, what are the patterns in my behavior that have contributed to the situation I find myself in? I, I call it self-work, I guess, um, being able to be in a place of um, really sort of transparent, um, like inner work where you really take a personal inventory and you check through all your ways of being in the world. And I used to be someone who always wanted to put my opinion out there in conversation. I'd always jump 
And some of the self-reflection work I've done over the past few years is that that tendency meant that I uh, was sometimes unable just to sit and listen rather than feel the need to jump in and give my opinion or tell them my story or my perspective um, rather than just like sitting and listening and hearing someone's experience and I found that in conflict I would do that too so now I'm in a place where you know something came up a couple of weeks ago and I could tell that the person I was talking with was in a reactionary state and instead of being triggered myself I really um, took a look at the ways in which I had helped ignite this situation and sometimes it's uncomfortable and sometimes it's really vulnerable and there are moments where you know in the past year I'll get together with a, a certain friend or someone and, and we get together and we gossip about something because it feels good or we like tell stories about someone and we have a giggle at that other person's expense and um in reflecting back recently I realize that that doesn't like feel good in my body anymore and that's a part of the self-reflective work that I've been doing how to really take responsibility for our actions and the ways in which we engage with people in the world I find this way of being uh, to be more peaceful. Um, I find that I'm in more of a state of equilibrium. I'm not rocked emotionally as much as I was before because it's working on myself. It's constantly taking a look at my patterns and shifting them and pivoting and making tweaks and oh, that's interesting, observing um, what my tendencies are and being okay with leaning into those things and unpacking them a little bit and figuring out where they're stemmed from and why they're there in the first place. And if I can spend a bit of attention and nurturing time healing those little aspects of my life, whether they came from some sort of childhood trauma or past experiences where I'd been hurt or triggered or whatever, um, it can really help to forge a different path and you get to create new patterns and new ways of being in the world. And I feel so much more grounded in my body and at peace. And I actually just feel like a better person now that I'm taking a look at my own stuff. And it used to be quite confronting and I was very defensive and I always thought I was in the right. I always thought that my way was the right way and I had the right perspective and I had the right opinions and you know they're all the ones that wronged me. And that's just, there was no growth there that was stagnant. So for me to uh, look at my flaws and, you know, analyze them in a way that isn't with judgment, but just like, oh, that's interesting that my, this was my, my, my go-to. This was the place that I landed in after feeling a certain way. And being able to sort of massage that and help to move that through so that I'm engaging in the world in a way that feels really like me and the kind of person that I want to be. I want to be a loving, kind, compassionate, understanding, accepting loving human being um, and and seeing people in their humanity, seeing them in their imperfectness um, and, and allowing them to be there without taking it personally. And that's another big lesson in all of this, the self-work I've done, the self-reflection is 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 not taking those experiences personally and knowing that oh that's a person in suffering right now that's a person who's in the feeling state and in fact 
even if it feels difficult or challenging, um, I can offer up a place where I'm a safe person for them to land with all of their big feelings, which is what we do with the kids as well, um, with a loving boundary so that their heavy energy doesn't impact me. So I find that this self-reflective work helps to strengthen my friendships with people. Uh, it deepens my relationships with everyone in my orbit. And I'm able to have the type of communication that I've always dreamt of having with people. Um, Mark and I call it like being on the level. Like, let's just get on the level. Let's get real. Let's get deep. Let's get vulnerable. Share all of, all of the imperfect parts of ourselves that um, we are working on and that we are tending to because it does take time to tend to ourselves and um you know I don't know if you guys know much about Enneagrams or um there's like the Myers-Briggs personality test and when I first took that I was an ENFJ and I think the way that I've worked on myself over the years, I, I pivoted and I'm now an ENFP. And they say that you can do it every five years and, and you'll notice shifts. But I'm constantly like, I'm an evolving being. And the older I get, the more mature I am and the way that I get to see the world through the lens of my children. And, and I also just see other people as like beautiful, hopeful, individuals who are just wanting to have the best experiences and make connections and be good people and everyone's trying so hard when I can have that lens and look through that at everyone and at all the experiences that I have I have such a better time on this planet I have those meaningful connections that I so desperately crave and that I love to nurture and that all comes from going inwards first. You can't pour from an empty cup, as they say. And going inwards, doing the work, uh, only strengthens your relationships, firstly, with yourself, um, but your relationship to your children and to the people who you love the most. And from that place, when you're engaging with people from that place, you're going to have much more positive experiences in life. So um, get that mirror, take a look at, at all the ways in which you've navigated through the world over however many years you can start as a child. You can, I, I do the works, I did the work starting um, as a child and sort of unwinding and sort of unraveling a lot of experiences from my childhood. You can do it on your own. You could do it with a therapist or another trusted friend who's interested in that kind of work. You can read books. Um, and then also just taking a look at choices that you've made in your life. And uh, you'll probably start to notice some patterns. And when you notice something that feels a bit sticky, you can take note of it, try and figure out where that's come from and really work towards making different choices, pivoting and changing and evolving and growing because that is the fruit of life. And we are having this human experience. And I always like to think that it's about learning as much as we can and just like growing into being better and better and better people. Um, so that's it from me and quarantine. Um, I will see you next episode for episode 10 of The Well. All right, guys, I'm sending lots of love. Bye.